Syria has warned that foreign-backed terrorists are planning to carry out another chemical attack in Idlib province and then try to shift the blame of it on the government. In a statement, of foreign ministry said that Tahrir al-Sham terrorists in coordination with a group called the White Helmets have brought two tons of chemical substances into a town south of Idlib. Ministry said that Damascus condemns in the strongest terms such heinous crimes and called on countries which support terrorists to stop their tricks. It said that Syria will hold those backing terrorism, including the U.S., France, Germany and Turkey, responsible for chemical attacks and the loss of innocent civilian life. Now, back in April 2018, terrorists carried out a similar attack, killing some 50 people and blamed the Syrian government for the assault. Damascus strongly rejected the accusation. And now joining us for this news review is Muhammad Ali, Press TV correspondent from Damascus and Rick Sterling, investigative journalist joining us out of California. Gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you both to the broadcast here. Muhammad, we're going to start with you. Give us the latest out of Damascus. Yes, uh, Syria's Foreign and Expatriates Ministry uh, said in a statement uh, that the uh, terrorists of the Hayat uh, Tahrir al-Sham, which is, of course, led by the al Nusra Front, have brought about two tons of uh, chemical substances uh, to a town uh, southwest of Idlib in coordination with the so-called White Helmets Organization, and, of course, also with the support, and I quote what the ministry said, of, it, of those terrorist Western uh, supporters. The foreign ministry went on to say that those terrorists are planning to carry out a chemical attack in Idlib against civilians uh, uh, in cooperation and with coordination uh, with the uh, uh, Turkish intelligence and then uh, blame the Syrian uh, government. Uh, the foreign ministry also said that it strongly condemns uh, what it describes as this heinous crime, calling on the uh, countries supporting those terrorists to stop their tricks and also saying that uh, the, the, the Syrian Arab Republic will hold responsible those countries supporting the terrorists, especially the United States, the UK, uh, France, uh, Germany and Turkey, responsible for the terrorist use of such uh, uh, chemical substances. Now, this uh, foreign ministry state Statements come only uh, uh, three days uh, following a similar warning from Russia. The Russian Reconciliation Center here in Syria, particularly its deputy chief, also warned that terrorists of Tahrir al-Sham are uh, planning to carry out uh, chemical uh, provocations and attack uh, south uh, of Idlib, and also saying that exactly where those terrorists are planning to carry out that attack in two towns, Ariha and Ibsamis, south. Uh, of Idlib and that the White Helmets organization will be filming that uh, so-called attack, uh, false attack or fabrication. Thank you, Mohammed, for that update. Mr. Rick Sterling, welcome to the program. Your initial thoughts on the story, Rick. Uh, first of all, it's very good that uh, the, the Syrians have detected this and, and have a, blown the whistle on the arrival of this two ton tons of chemical weapons in the uh, in the town near Idlib, um, uh, viewers might. Uh, it's worth recalling that in 2013, uh, the uh, the uh, the the big explosions, the sarin gas attack that occurred on the outskirts of Damascus, uh, ultimately were shown by investigative investigative journalists Seymour Hirsch and Robert Perry and others uh, to have been the result of Al, uh, Al Qaeda, Jabhat al Nusra with support from Turkish intelligence. So the latest reports continues the uh, what we've seen in the past, where Turkish intelligence has worked with the with the terrorists in Syria. Of course, the Syria uh, Syrian government has absolutely no motive to do so, uh, something like this. Um, the terrorists have all the motive in the world because they've been trying for nine years to get the West to come in and to attack the Syrian government. So uh, this is, uh, it seems like this is a repeat of what's gone on in the past. And it's its very good news that the uh, Syrian government is blowing the whistle on the arrival of uh, the uh, two tons of chemical weapons in the, in the town. Thanks, Rick. And, and Mohammed, to Rick's point there, talking about the Syrian government having no motive, uh, I'm gonna bring up two things in particular, Khan Sheikhoun and Duma. Both times, the Syrian government had these, uh, you know, uh, foreign back militants backpedaling. They had 90 percent of those towns taken. There was less than uh, 8 to 10 percent presence of the uh, terrorists left. And guess what? We see uh, alleged chemical attacks, which resulted in the West 
you know, bombing uh, targets and getting involved. It was never when the Syrian government was on its back, you know, backpedaling where these attacks took place. So, I mean, there's, we never saw the motive, never made sense, never was uh, logically the thing for the Syrian government to do yet. The West bought the story, if there was really even a story there to, to be bought, and carried out raids on Syrian government positions. What can you tell us about those two cases, Mohammed? Uh, I'm sorry, I lost I lost the uh, connection for a couple of seconds, so I didn't get the, the question the, clearly. Can the, I? Okay, the similarities between what we're seeing now and exactly what took place in Khan Sheikhoun and Duma. Yes, exactly. Now, we have to point out to a very important uh, point here that Every time the terrorists feel that they're losing, uh, 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 of course, in front of the Syrian uh, uh, government and its allies, they carry out such attacks, uh, chemical attacks, uh, and blame the Syrian government for it. Because at the end of the day, they know that this is the only way that they can do something about it in order to invite some kind of foreign intervention or uh, get up the international community to stop the Syrian government or pause its attack on those terrorists. Now, very important points also to point out, too, is that there is uh, uh, no point uh, to blame the Syrian government of carrying out chemical attack uh, for uh, uh, one reason, which is that the ordinary weapons that the Syrian government is using, the Russian airstrikes, are doing the goal. One, this is one point. The second point, it makes no sense that the Syrian government would carry out such an attack because, first, it doesn't have chemical weapons. Second, uh, it, it is not going to bomb its own people and invite foreign intervention. And third, which is a very important point, uh, is that who is behind such attacks? It is the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, which is led by the al-Nusra Front. This uh, terrorist group is not involved in any kind of a political solution, any kind of negotiations or future negotiations, and it, it is even outside the framework of uh, the Astana talks, meaning that it is excluded from any kind of political talks. So they know, those terrorists of Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, that they will be killed uh, and they will be defeated by the Syrian government. And now they are perhaps sensing that there is some kind of an attack coming against them by the Syrian government Thank because they are regarded as terrorists. Thank you, Mohammed. And Rick, we have about a, a minute left, bud. Your final thoughts, please. Uh, well, I think whenever a, uh, a presidential election happens in, in the United States, uh, in some ways it, it endangers the whole world. Uh, unfortunately, we've, we've got a situation where both the pro-Trump and anti-Trump people, you could see them um, uh, possibly uh, uh, wanting to provoke a conflict there. Uh, either to to show that Trump, um, is, you know, enforces the quote unquote red line or something that was that was that uh, that uh, was a, in the past, or it could be that the anti-Trump forces want to uh, lock him in and and to basically forestall any any uh, successful negotiations or reduction in the conflict. So either way, you the the partisan nature of the election process in the United States. Uh, in, in some ways, it, it, it can endanger uh, countries very far away like Syria. All right, gentlemen, thanks for both of you for both of you for joining us and do stay safe. That was Muhammad Ali from Damascus and Mr. Rick Sterling joining us out of sunny California. And viewers, that's a wrap for the segment of your Press News News Review. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye for now.